everyone. I'm Steve Weintraub. I'm here at the Cinema Center in Toronto, uh, which is sponsored by Range Rover. I want to give a huge thank you to Range Rover for being our sponsor. Uh, we couldn't be here without uh, people like them. So thank you. I am here with the fine folks behind The Luckiest Man in America. How are you guys doing? We're good. Thank you for having us. Great. Thank you for having us. So this is a crazy, crazy true story. And like, I remember uh, growing up and hearing about this, but um, there's going to be a lot of people that that don't know. So yeah. how have you been? What do you want to tell people about the movie? Uh, it's inspired in the true story of Michael Larson, who went into the game show Pressure Luck in 1984 and won a lot of money because he memorized the patterns on a game board. Yep. It, what's What's amazing about the story is that like uh, uh, is that he this really happened and it was like a real controversy behind the scenes. I think a lot of people are wondering, like, do you for both of you, do you think he cheated or do you think he just figured something out? Definitely a controversial question, um, but I think he just found a loophole, you know, he just studied a little harder, he focused a little deeper, and he realized something that was a flaw in the system, and he exploited it. So the short answer is a fair game. Yeah, exactly. I believe that he was just finding alternative ways to accomplish his dreams, and he thought about something that nobody else had, and he just like pushed through with it, and he succeeded. I also don't think he cheated. I think right. that if you find the loophole in a system and you exploit it, that's not cheating. That's you figuring out something that no one else saw. Exactly. Correct. You know, so uh, I am curious, what was it about this story and this material that said, I need to make this? And for you, what was it about the script and story that said, I want to be a part of it? Um, I think it was the fact that we knew the 42 minutes uh, of the clip that you can find online. Um, but when you watch that, you see that there's such a complex character behind him. And uh, I think it was worth delving deep into it and exploring uh, what was really behind this guy's intentions and, and what it took him to get to the show. Um, so that's, I thought it was worthy of a movie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I echo a lot of what Samir just said, but I got introduced to the part. I got sent a script, a deck and an offer to meet with Samir. Um, candidly, I wasn't too familiar with the material. So I sat with Samir and what really excited me about working with him beyond the story was that his vision, Samir's vision was very, very clear. He knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted to accomplish and how he wanted to tell this story, which was really great because as you can see, this is a very contained pressure cooker movie. You know, most of it takes place in one location pretty much. And um, I was just so excited to, to see Paul Walter Hauser dive into this guy's brain. And yeah, there's the game show element, there's him exploit a loophole element, but it really is about a man in America trying to make it and he found a way to make it. And it really is a human story on the backdrop of a game show. And the character that I played, who I found was really the audience's POV. He's the guy that sees a smoking gun and he's able to figure out what is going on and try to let his colleagues and peers know that, no, this guy, Michael Larson, he's up to something. And he knew it right away in the audition. And so I think those elements were exciting. I got to go to Columbia. I got to a period piece. I got to work with Walton Goggins. I mean, it was definitely an actor's dream for me to, to be paired with this Super Saiyan cast. Well, one of the things that people won't realize is yeah. you were able to film this during the strike as you know, you got an indie way, you got the waiver yeah. and you assembled like a murderer's row of people. Uh, so like talk a little bit about that, the putting together this great cast. Yeah, it was uh, like the perfect storm because uh, we were one of the indie projects that got the SAG waiver to shoot. Um, and uh, we had some fans in the agencies because we had just started to cast um, and we had Paul attached already. But when the strike hit, um, all of those agents that had read the script said, here you go. Who do you want to who do you want to go with? Um, they're all out of work and they want to work. So that's when it became a perfect storm. And, and we just went for all our top choices and every single one said yes. So it was it was really just a dream come true. I felt like the luckiest man in America. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, and it is true, there's a lot of stuff out there for people to watch and having a lot of actors that people recognize really helps get people to watch something when there's choices between a few things. Exactly. You know, uh, that I sort of didn't have a question there. I'm just sort of making a statement. But like you obviously made this on a budget. Yeah. So what were you most concerned about pulling off with the schedule and budget you had? Um, good question. I think it really was just about recreating the set as faithfully as possible. 
Which was um, an amazing set. Blown away. It was so good. Yeah. Um, cause there's, you can see the source material, you can find it online and, uh, there's a lot of people who grew up watching the show. So if we pulled that off, we know that people were going to get into the story. Um, so we really spent, um, a lot of time discussing how the set was going to look, make sure that this, the board was working, make sure that the podiums were working, um, make sure that they were being, um, yeah, like they worked around the cameras and, and we could fit all our, our plan for, for the cinematography around those fixed sets. Um, but yeah, I think that was, that was the biggest challenge just making sure that we could pull it off so that then we can have it as our playground and, and, and make our movie. So I am so curious, obviously before, uh, this all happened, the board worked like I had a five way thing, you know, like there's five games. I don't know what the right terminology is. Patterns, five, yeah. five patterns. Thank you. And then obviously they changed it. Yeah. So did you purposely do the five patterns when you were programming or putting it up there? And part two is how many people wanted to play the game <laughs> when they were not filming and just like see what they could do with it? It's uh, it is five patterns. Um, so we programmed the five patterns, and we made sure that uh, Paul was looking, and he kind of memorized the five patterns um, when we were shooting. Um, so it was easy for him to land uh, with his eyes when we were shooting at him on the correct one, so that then it could match. Um, but yeah, we 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 did program the five patterns, and I don't know. Did you feel like playing? With the board when it was going, <laughs> I, I I personally I'm just bad at games. Period. So no, because I would have embarrassed myself. But I was just fascinated at the fact of how identical it looked. Yeah. Like when you walk into the studio, I felt like I was actually on press your luck, and like the audience was actually there. They actually had like the signs that said "applause now," "laugh now." They had everything. It was. Um, I've been on a lot of sets, and this one. They could have probably turned into a game show the next morning if you guys wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I, I swear if it had been on set, I would have been like, everyone needs to leave. I need like 30 minutes to actually play. With no you know, cash prize though. No, I mean, just just to push the button and you know see what I could actually do. And the thing actually turned around, which was really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it was again, really cool. I would have lost my mind. <laughs> it's one of those, anyway, so you for both of you, uh, you see the shooting schedule in front of you. Uh, what day did you have circled in terms of, I can't wait to film this? And what day was circled in terms of, how the F are we gonna film this? uh good question so uh there was day one is always an awkward one because everyone's just warming up to their characters and getting ready for for the movie for the month ahead um so we again had in-depth conversations with the team and we realized that showing up to a game show as a contestant is also kind of nerve-wracking so we decided to start with the very first introduction of the game show on day one um which made a lot of sense. So Paul, day one, was introduced as as uh, Michael Larson, and it was his first day on set. So he was, that that awkwardness was really working for us on camera. Um, and same with all of the other characters. So it, we took advantage of the fact that it was gonna be like a, a weird moment for everyone on stage on a fake game show. Um, so that was, that was a, a, a fun, day uh, and it worked in our advantage um what about you what was your favorite the shooting schedule was very tight very ambitious so yeah. every day for me was a fun day any day i got to go on you know do scenes with paul um he's a funny guy on and off camera and when the talk about wrestling we talked about wrestling yeah. and i'm canadian and you know one of our favorite wrestlers is Edge, Adam Copeland, shout out Adam Copeland, uh, who's like one of Paul's favorite wrestlers. Adam's not here, by the way. Oh, I thought you were just, like all we, we have the same manager, uh, Daniel. And so I met Adam Copeland, who's a big Canadian wrestler. He's an icon, and Trish Stratus. But yes, we spoke about all the wrestling, and that's what we talked about off, that guy is a avid wrestling fan. No, no I, like, I don't think avid is the right word. What's the word? Uh, obsessive. Obsessive. Yeah. This man is an obsessive. You know, so I would do a wrestling movie with Paul Walter Hauser tomorrow. Trish Stratus, Adam Copeland, if you're watching, we want to make a movie. Samir is going to direct it. I just offered you up, Samir. You're yeah, doing yeah. it. Down. All right. No, Daniel, I mean, Daniel, make it happen. That's the manager. He manages Trish and Adam. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm fascinated by the editing process because it's where it all comes together. Yeah. So um, how did this film possibly change in the editing room in ways you didn't expect? Yeah, um, we are very rigorous with our uh, focus groups. So once we had an, uh, a 
yeah, like a first cut of the movie, we started screening it. And then um, we had a month in which we were editing from Monday to Friday to screen it on Saturday, get feedback on Saturday. We had people fill out surveys and then go back to the editing room again from Monday to Friday. I don't know. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, wow. yeah we did it in L.A. Um, and that really ended up polishing the movie. So that's that's how we got it to 90 minutes. And that's when we tested it and we realized like, okay, it's landing, the beats are, are landing, we, we have a movie. Oh, wow. We have a crowd pleaser, yeah. Did you have like a much longer cut originally? Like was something yeah. like two hours? Yeah, 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 it was uh, two hours, 20 minutes, the very oh, first wow. version of it. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. That, that is definitely, so I have to ask, what was, were there certain storylines or certain things that you, or do you know what I mean? Or is it just like scenes in scenes? All my bad scenes. All my bad <laughs> scenes is what got cut out the movie. He wanted to spare the world. All my shitty acting. Okay. Um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> there were just, uh, I don't know. We, we we started getting the same the same note on the fact that uh, people just were there for the game show part of the movie. And we had two scenes before uh, that started um, that we realized were not necessary. And we got rid of them so that we could keep uh, the main character more of a mystery as he got into the game show, uh, Paul's. Um, but really it just uh, became about rhythm. Like those two two hours and 20 minutes were like the very first version of the movie. And then yeah, it's just- an assembly cut. It's hooked. And then we just started like polishing and polishing and it became very rhythmic. And and that's, that's what really um, we ended up like chopping, just like make things um, very dynamic. Yeah. Also, like I say this all the time, like it doesn't uh, all that matters is the finished film. Yeah. You could have a four hour cut yeah. that gets down to 90 minutes. Yeah, if that's yeah. the best version of the film. Then that's the best version. Totally. You know, like uh, uh, anyway. Um, so I, you are also a producer. You you do a lot of stuff. Um, what exactly is it like for you um, now in terms of like what you're working on behind the scenes besides this project? Well, <clears throat> Besides this project, I got a lot of cool things happening and, um, you know, just creating with other creatives. I DJ right now, which is a lot of fun. You know, I did not, DJing. but thanks for the invite. Oh, uh, you're always invited first and foremost. You're just unavailable because you're so busy. Uh, Dave, that is but. not true. I would fly up and I'm joking. Uh -huh. I, I would not. But yeah, just um, doing, <laughs> doing that stuff, you know, which is fun. And yeah, it's it's exciting. I'm back home premiering, you know, Luckiest Man in America in my hometown with this guy and other cast members. And it's just fun, you know. Well, yeah. I'm going to ask you a part two to this. Please. And, and I said it off camera, but you know, I love the John Wick movies. What was it like after that film came out for you in terms of friends and family being like, get the F out of here, you being in that film? My family is Jamaican as they come, which means they just see me for me, just Shamir. So it's actually, there's been no change, <laughs> to be honest. They're just like, oh, it's another movie that Sham's in. Clean your room. You know what I mean? Like wash the dishes, you know? But uh, it's love. It's love. But I will say, you know, that movie, I mean, if you do a movie with Keanu Reeves, you know, that's really the, the moment, you know? And so people have responded really well. And I'm really the luckiest kid in Canada <laughs> to be a part of a cast like that. Um, and yeah. Sure. I, listen, I, I have to bring up John Wick anytime course, I talk to anyone. Of course, you know, of course, from, of course. It's a, it's a constant thing. Also, uh, Keanu's the best. Like literally, just the nicest, nicest guy. Um, talk a little bit about um, what, how tough was it to get the financing and to get this project off the ground? Or was it one of these things because of the pressure luck and the notoriety and people knowing the story a little bit, was it a little easier? Uh, definitely having something that you can uh, inspire, to, inspire to on uh, help financing. But it really started um, working in our favor when we got Paul. So once once he he joined as the lead, um, things starting to fall into place, um, which makes sense. Like no, totally. you need somebody that big to to hopefully. Also talented though, I think talent is so important. You know, I yeah. think his stature is one thing, but you know, as creatives, there's the supernova esoteric element of being actors. But when it comes down to it, I think Samir assembled great actors. Yeah, we have resumes and you know cool things that we've done, but Paul shows his taste, also Samir's taste, because if Samir has taste enough to hire Paul, who I think is just the perfect casting for Michael Larson, you know, he's kind of a draw. And I think when you get a guy like Paul, then you get a guy like Walton, and, and then it just kind of keeps funneling in. But yeah. um, but yeah, he's, you know, the actor's actor, in my opinion. Oh yeah, also, I, I am a huge fan of Walton. 
Like, That's great. And, and he's having a little bit of a moment with yeah. the fallout and well, with everything he does. Yeah, amazing guy. It was a pleasure to have him on set. You uh, talking about like this all star cast. Yeah. So what is it like for you? You haven't directed that many movies. Yeah. Like, what is it like when you're giving direction to, you know, really talented actors and you're like, you know what I mean? And helping yeah, craft yeah, yeah. a performance. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of uh, soccer. So um, I always um, follow um, when Jose Mourinho arrived to Real Madrid and he had all the stars in his team. He said, I'm not going to teach Cristiano Ronaldo how to kick a ball. I'm just going to teach him how to play as a team with everyone else. So that's pretty much the approach um, that I took when when directing these guys. They, they know how to act. I'm not there to um, teach them how to do it, but I'm there to make it run as a team. And uh, that's that that was my my job, making sure that everyone was listening to each other and they were doing it together as a team. Uh, yeah, I, 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 again, I couldn't do what you do. Um, so we're at the Toronto Film Festival. I believe you were shooting this movie like a year ago or yeah. less. What, at any point during the shoot where you're like, we're going to TIFF, this thing's going like, you know what I mean? Like, cause this is my favorite film festival being here is a, like a privilege and an honor. You know, what does it mean to you? Uh, amazing. Yeah. We exactly a year ago, we were finishing, um, the third week of principal photography. So we had not uh, even finished shooting the movie. And I always tell this guy, but yeah, if, if we, I would have known that I would be premiering a year later in TIFF, I would not have, wouldn't have believed it. So it's, it's really just a dream come true. And everything ended up pointing to Toronto. This guy, some of the investors are from Toronto. My producer is from Toronto. Um, it just, it was TIFF. My last question for you. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you're going to be making another movie. What are you? Are you looking at other scripts? Are you writing? Like, what are you thinking about? Writing a lot. Um, we have the next one pretty far into development. Um, Do you want to tease what it's called? Tease us. Tease us. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, single location pressure cooker, but in the hotel industry world, um, about a reggaeton artist who decides to overstay his welcome for a weekend and then just starts to cause a lot of trouble. Jeez, sounds like the, the like phone booth meets like something else like the luckiest man in america like the luckiest man in america <laughs> um on on that note uh i really want to say congratulations on the film uh and i know it will get released because of the performances in the film uh is it wait it's for sale here or is it, it is. yeah I'm, I'm not worried about the movie uh on that note i'm just going to say thank you so much for coming into our studio Thanks i wish you nothing but us. the best and um thank you can we have a moment thank for you. steve's shirt please like can we just acknowledge the fact of steve's shirt right now this is a real canadian legend next to another legend you have the best shirts in hollywood on record, I said it. This man has the best t-shirts. I will take that. And on that note, thank you. Thank you. Bye.